Welcome back to County Connection. For this segment, we are going to be talking about Conflict Resolution Month, and I have with me County Commissioner Karn Stigelmeyer, who usually is on Scott's show, but we've stolen <laughs> her over to my show <laughs> this month, <laughs> and Dr. Carol Gerard, who is a retired psychologist here in Summit County, and both of you are members of the Conflict Resolution Coalition of Summit County, which is a somewhat new group, um, but been doing some great work here. So uh, why not, um, if you ladies could kick it off by um, telling us what the Conflict Resolution Coalition is all about? Well, this was started a year ago, and our fearless leader, Myra Eisenhart, is yeah. actually the one that gathered all of us together to get a coalition of people who are involved in this kind of work. And so last year, we got started in September. October is Conflict Resolution Month. So we did one event that was really a great event last year. And this year, we have a number of events for Conflict Resolution Month. And the idea is just to make people more aware of all the tools and professionals out there that can help with inevitable conflict resolution. Right. And or so, conflict. Right. And finding resolution. And, right. finding resolution. <laughs> right. um, and really, the point is to kind of um, acknowledge and accept that conflict is a part of our lives right. um, and that uh, and that in a lot of ways it's a healthy part of our lives if we're dealing with it in healthy ways. Carol, can you speak well, to that? It's pretty hard to avoid conflict if you're going to go through life in any kind of connected or engaged way. Um, there are people that are very conflict avoidant um, and I think those are the folks that are they, they really don't learn those skills of negotiation and, and really how to integrate into a group. Uh, they tend to be on the outside looking in. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of a hard way to live. And then there are people who are very comfortable with conflict to the extent that they're in people's faces a lot and that creates, of course, the obvious kinds of things that conflict resolution uh, deals more directly with. Right. Um, and I think this county has an amazing uh, wealth of resources. Mm -hmm. uh, that I think people do and don't know about. Um, mm -hmm. But for this size of county, I think we're incredibly rich with what we have um, in terms of conflict resolution professionals and people that have that training. Right, so no matter where you may fall on that spectrum, in you know, you may be very uncomfortable, you may be <laughs> maybe too comfortable yes. and, and find that dealing with conflict isn't working out for you very well because maybe you're not doing it as productively as you could, um, that you don't have to be stuck there in That's that right. spot on the spectrum, that um, there are a lot of resources and tools um, to help deal with conflict in a way that's peaceful and, um, and constructive for all involved. I think that we've done a good job. I worked in the school district for a number of years at the end of my career, and I think we've done a good job in the school district teaching kids those skills. And what I noticed is sometimes kids will take those skills home to their parents oh, wow. and say, <laughs> hey, let's try this, Mom and Dad. Uh, didn't happen real often, but uh, I would get reports back now and then that, that uh, kids were actually teaching their parents some of the methods that, that we were encouraging at school. So that, excellent. Was, that was excellent. Great. So. Um, can you two give some examples of how some of these um, strategies and practices and tools are at play in the community? Um, so who's using them um, in ways that are benefiting either neighbors or communities or coworkers? I can speak, I think, to um, the whole area of divorce and the, the conflict that obviously that creates um, long-term hard feelings and lots of long-term effect on kids. With um, divorce processes, we used to be much more adversarial, um, where we'd have long fights and lawyers and mm -hmm. courtrooms and high, high expenses, and kids would get sometimes drugged through that process as well. And the courts and the mental health professions, and I think the um, law enforcement professions, finally started talking together saying, this is not a good way. If people need to be done with each other, let's see if there's a way we can do that in a peaceful, more constructive manner. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there's always going to be um, difficult feelings and difficult sure. things to resolve. But um, so the trend has been, in, in the 30 years I was in the mental health business, the trend has been away from that adversarial uh, divorce resolution to a more uh, really peaceful model where the, the parties come together, um, not necessarily with lawyers, but with advocates, um, with parent um, 
and family court facilitators and really try to solve those problems on a, um, a much more peaceful and accommodating way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always work. We still <laughs> do need the courts as a, back, sure. as a backstop um, because people can't always voluntarily resolve their, their conflicts. But um, that's, I think, been a trend that I've been really happy to see over Great. the years. And I think in Summit County, we do generally have a mindset community-wise and government-wise that we will find solutions instead mm -hmm. of just saying, this is the way it is and we're not changing. Um, we try to bring groups together and, and find consensus um, in all ways, whether it's towns, counties, towns and towns. Um, and some of that is, the, we have great examples that Carol was talking about in our probation and law enforcement, where we really try to do what's best for for people mm -hmm. instead of you're going to pay your time and uh, we, we want to see people come out of probation um, being successful individuals. Mm -hmm. We have a great example of drug court in our county where it's a last chance for people. They may be going to prison next mm -hmm. if they can't make it through the drug court process and it seems expensive for what you're doing for an individual, but when you compare it to yeah. being in prison for many years, it's actually a bargain. It is a bargain. And of course, it's wonderful for those individuals that come out and are successful. And their families. And their families. Because you know what happens to kids when their parents have been in jail. Mm -hmm. the, the outlook for them is not positive. Right. Karen, can you talk also about the Tenderfoot um, yeah. Mountain example? Sure. It's a great example. Um, that, that was, um, Forest Service long process, travel management plan, and in that process there were a lot of objectors and lawsuits mm -hmm. because every user group wanted what they wanted sure. out of the travel management plan. And, and these are different modes of travel, so hiking, yeah, horses, hiking, horses, motorcycle, um, not not compatible, snowmobiles, <laughs> skiing, you know, all, all uses, and mm -hmm. we all are out there using like crazy in right. Summit County. So we were very aware of the neighborhood concerns and hiker concerns when the Forest Service said, okay, the motorcycle group um, is an objector and so we're going to let them have this tenderfoot area. And we said, wait a minute, let's, let's go back and have a process where it's facilitated, where we get everyone around the table. We have the motorcyclists, the hikers, the neighbors, all sitting around the table and come up with something that will really work. There were also a lot of environmental concerns, right. a lot of pollution, a lot of user-made trails. So it was um, a really unique process for the Forest Service because they have their federal guidelines about how they do these processes and this was not in the books. Mm -hmm. So we sort of strong-armed our way in and, and we were willing to pay the Keystone Center to be the facilitator of that process. It needed a professional. Mm -hmm. And so through those meetings, there was a great understanding um, that was developed with all the different user groups and um, a compromise reached, which includes monitoring and um, environmental restoration. And I think everybody came out, not with their favorite <laughs> um, outcome, but with an outcome that they thought was actually right for the whole group. Awesome. Great. So um, looking forward to all of the uh, great events that you have scheduled as part of um, Conflict Resolution Month. Um, things are going to um, launch on October 3rd. Tell us about that, Karn. So that's the kickoff event. <laughs> and so it's learn all about conflict resolution at an ice cream social. And this is something um, that we actually had talk it out dialogue panels. We had them at CMC. A couple years ago. A couple ago. years ago, I think. And they, they were created by a statewide group working on conflict resolution. And so they are life, life size or six or eight foot tall panels that talk about real conflicts in Colorado. Could be neighbor to neighbor, um, some really difficult situations, mm -hmm. community wide, or just individuals and families. And so on one side of the panel, it talks about what the conflict was, and on the other side, you can read about how they resolved it. And they're really moving. 
Um, they, they were launched first at the state capitol and okay. got a lot of attention there. And so we have them at the South Branch Library. Great. And that will, that will be the kickoff event. Great. And, and so Representative Millie Hamner Representative is going to be there. Millie Hamner will be there. And she's really excited about this process, anything that we can do in the state mm -hmm. as a state representative and in our community to help people find peaceful conflict. Re resolution. <laughs> Great. Um, and Carol, so there's going to be an event that's centered on race relations mm -hmm. as well. Tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about that. Well, the, the impetus for it obviously was um, the kinds of things, events that have been going on across the country uh, for the last several years and, and certainly before that. Right. Uh, when we were talking about different, in the coalition meeting, when we were talking about different themes, um, I started saying to the group, let's do something about race, because this is, this is big, this is real, um, this impacts all of us, whether we're white, whether we're person of color. And uh, I was put in contact with a, a man by the name of Harold Fields, he lives down in Denver, and he's run a group called the Second Tuesday Race Forum for 18 years. So he is well acquainted with how to kind of move people from where they start in terms of their belief system and move them through at least the beginnings of a process of increased racial awareness and sensitivity. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited for, um, for this event. I think it'll be helpful for us, even in this pri predominantly um, Anglo-white county, to raise our awareness and help us understand uh, there's a lot of history that we're not taught mm -hmm. in school, a great right. deal of history that we're not taught. And our white privilege is like the air. We just take it for granted. We don't even know sometimes what, what our white skin brings us. Um, mm -hmm. I think we could all benefit from, from increased learning. And right, so and a lot of those things that we, we're not conscious of it. Um, very and, much so. And we yeah. may not be aware of how bias is, right. um, is kind of coming through us. Yeah, um, and we all have it. It's, it's a part of the human nature, human mm -hmm. condition. We categorize people and this is coming from more of the psychological side, naturally, you know, our brains have to have some way to organize um, information coming in and categories um, are, are one of the ways we do that. But what we do as humans is then assign value or worth to those categories and we, we all do it um, and it's, it's not a healthy way to live. Mm-hmm. And so when is this event then? This will be on October 25th, so okay. it'll be the end of the month. Uh, it's a Sunday afternoon. The Broncos are not playing, <laughs> uh, which was helpful. So we're hoping to get a good turnout for that reason. Um, and it'll be over at the Senior Center from 2 to 4. Um, okay, and the perfect. format will be kind of a more of an inf informational period and then small table discussions with um, um, discussion starter questions, that kind of thing, so, and then some resources at the end, so it'll be, there's no ice cream though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking maybe this, this might need some ice cream, but uh, we haven't gotten that far. <laughs> cookies, <laughs> cookies, yeah, cookies, yeah, we might have to look into cookies. <laughs> All right, uh, and then there's a book um, that uh, the group is promoting and encouraging folks to read this month um, in the theme of conflict resolution. Yeah, this is a book that everyone can relate to. It's yeah. The Sticking Points, and it talks about four generations, and we have four generations now in the workplace, and so it focuses on the workplace, but what they talk about is applicable to anything, um, to your family, to your neighborhood, whatever. Um, and this, it, it's very practical. It goes through examples of how each of these generations looks, has a different perception of how they should act, how they should work, what their, their, worth et, their work ethic is, and the, I guess the, the extreme is the millennials and the traditionals. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, you can imagine uh, dress code is a big issue for traditionals. Uh, millennials think that flip-flops are fine. And so it goes through examples of, well, is that really bad to wear flip-flops? Well, in some cases it is, but in some cases it might be okay to wear the flip-flops. So instead of just sticking to your perceptions, looking at the whys, why do you think that way? 
millennials are famous for, you know, their screens and always having their screens. <laughs> sure. And there's a lot of conflict around that in work environments. And in some cases, those screens need to go down. But in some cases, those millennials are working with multiple screens. That is the way they work, and they may be extremely efficient and effective workers. Uh -huh. So um, just getting out of your box of your yeah. generation and how you see things and being able to talk it out. A lot of the book is about the same thing that the dialogue panels are, talk uh -huh. it out. Um, instead of just categorizing that generation doesn't understand, that generation is um, lazy, all those kinds of... Irresponsible. Yeah. All those things. And there's plenty of that going on. Or the other direction of that generation is old, old and out of it. They're sticking yeah, right, mud. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if really? you really yeah. understand um, their perspective, then you can actually work together better mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of the workplace have a more effective sure. workplace. Great. And there's going to be a discussion so there are of the book? two um, book discussions and you don't have to have read the book. That's you important can, to know. <laughs> you can relate to this whether you've read the book or not, yes. so you're welcome to come. And there um, I don't have the dates. In my I think head. I have them right here. <laughs> Good. So um, one is at the Next Page Bookstore, and it's Tuesday, October 20th. And then there's another one, I have it backwards. Um, October 14th is at the Next Page Bookstore, and one of our coalition members is leading that discussion. Great. Um, and October 20th at the South Branch Library. Excellent. Uh, the libraries do have a lot of these books on hand. Mm -hmm. So you're welcome to pick one up. Um, check it out. It's, it's really great. Anyone can relate to this book. All right. Uh, well, is there any, are there any other events that you'd like to bring up or um, topics on Conflict Resolution Month in general? I think we're, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm new to the coalition um, and it just sounds like we have many more events going on that um, people can plug in at different places and stuff. So I just think it's, it's really developing and really kind of moving along um, as a theme in the county and as a set of resources that people can, can access. Excellent. Now, I would encourage everyone to go to as many events as possible. And um, the kickoff with ice cream mm -hmm. is definitely for kids, for adults, for professionals, for anyone. I think anyone can take away something from that. All right. And all those are listed on the Summit County website. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can um, go to the home page of the Summit County website, which is www.summitcountyco.gov. Um, and there's a press release there that lists all the dates and times and locations of all these great events, um, as well as a link to the, um, the, the, state statewide the statewide website. All right. Well, thanks so much, ladies, for coming in, and thanks, thanks for the hard work that you um, are doing to let our community know about these tools and resources to resolve conflict productively and peacefully. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Happy we're gonna, October. Happy October. <laughs> we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about um, cybersecurity and some things you can do in your own life to protect your information. Okay.